Don't panic, Sunderland fans. Don't. We believe in you here at League of 72. We think you can still do something this season. And that's what we're going to dive into in this video. Breathe. Continue on that and I'll do the talking from here in. Welcome back to the League of 72. If you're new to the channel and you don't know what it's about, it's about the EFL. And this video in particular is going to be about Sunderland. Tumultuous over the last few seasons for sure. And of course, they're trying to get themselves out of League One and into the Championship. And Sunderland fans are of course getting concerned with the changes that are happening at the club right now. And the fact that this team was doing really well earlier in the season is now... Not doing too bad, actually. The third in the league at the moment. They've got a nice gap when it comes to the playoffs. And it's not over when it comes to getting into those automatic promotion places as well. And we're going to dive into some clips, taking a look at what was going so right earlier in the season and how they should look to recreate that. Have a look at some of the new signings that have come in in January as well. And generally, give you some more pep in your step if you're a Sunderland fan. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on all the videos that are coming up this is the channel when it comes to the EFL so make sure you get yourself subscribed right let's dive into this first of all blowing away the doom and gloom as I say third in the league at the moment in terms of teams who've got games in hand it's the two teams above them of course that makes life a little bit harder when you want those automatic promotion places but all is not lost and we will dive into that Rotherham with a game in hand Wigan with four games in hand of course they've got to win those games as well which is going to be difficult with so many games for them to have to play and the new manager of course is going to come into a very competitive situation but a situation where you have a squad that is good that is very, very exciting, of which we are going to go into quite a few of these players as well that are so good for them. As I say, Sunderland are third in the league at the time of recording, but with a change of manager, they need fresh ideas. I think they need someone with that element of steel, but some of those signings, I think, provide that steel. But the biggest thing is that they need to get back to the form of the start of the season and look back at that time and understand that this is a really, really good team and squad. Of course, if you remember those games at the start of the season, Wigan kicking off the season with a win against Wigan is something that has, as time's moved on, has gotten pulled into focus and it looks fantastic when you see what Liam Richardson's doing at that side. Of course, that was followed up by a 2-1 victory against MK Dons, who currently sit in fourth, have been one of the best teams when it comes to being on the ball, possession-based teams with some cracking players as well. And August was wrapped up with a victory against Wickham. So lots of teams that are difficult to beat and teams that Sunderland may well face in the playoffs, all of whom they've beaten already. The point here is Sunderland picked up 22 points from their opening 10 games. That's 2.2 points per game. If they were able to get back on a run like that, there's no reason why they can't get the automatic promotion places. So let's take a look at some clips in which they took apart some of those top League One sides. Starting with Wigan, which was the first win of the season. Now, this was Sunderland's second goal of the season, was ultimately the match winner. There are no prizes for guessing who scored the goal. It's a relatively straightforward goal as well, actually, from Ross Stewart. However, it's nice to see how he was able to hold off defenders so effectively while still being able to flick the ball with his neck muscles accurately goalwards. Now, this all sounds very simple, but I think the important thing to remember is this is a Wigan side that has gone on to be the side that has conceded the fewest shots from set pieces so far this season. Season. So this isn't easy. It's not easy to score these kind of set pieces. But in Ross Stewart, you've got someone who can offer that for you. And when you're going down every avenue to try and score as many goals, to secure as many wins, to get as many points, to get yourselves into the championship, simple goals like this are worth looking back on and reflecting on. If I just pause it for a second, Ross Stewart right here in the middle. And don't worry, he doesn't go flying anywhere. He stays exactly where he is on that six-yard line. He's got to deal with the defender there. A lot of physicality going on there, which you've just got to get on with. But his ability to score a goal like that, it's one where you will go, why have you shown me that? But the reason I've shown you that is that there are ways of scoring goals, even if you're not playing totally brilliantly at this moment in time. And I think the thing to remember when it comes to Sunderland is that there is a tension there. There is a little bit of a tension there and that will continue. So these set-piece goals and the option of scoring these set-piece goals could be absolutely crucial down the road. This next clip is from the 2-1 away win at MK Dons, in which MK Dons had 62% possession uh, and Sunderland still managed to come away with a win, which is, I think, testament to their squad's flexibility and coping with different tactical styles as well. This was their first goal in the game. What I like about this goal is how positive the play is overall. You can see here multiple runners getting into the box, a dummy run being made, and of course three players sniffing out in and around the six-yard box. 
ready to pounce, really. Really positive and brave from Sunderland in terms of going forward against a team that likes to dominate the ball. But I guess in, when it's a possession-based team, they don't break as quickly as other teams do. And so having those players getting forward and being positive and having, and if we put it back a little bit, as that cross comes in, the ability to put that cross in, coming in, comes from that left back making that underlying uh, underlapping run. The cross comes in. Yes, there's a bit of fortune there. But as I say, three players in the penalty box making it really difficult for MK Dons positivity I think that's a word I'm probably going to say quite a lot in this video and they showed it in this game against MK Dons and that winner at the start of the season in the glorious sunshine again comes from that same sentiment positivity as we can see here Elliot Embleton Durham born lad scores a goal here and it comes down to that positivity being abrupt in terms of how they play forward looking a little bit of luck there but plays the pass but having players on that final line of the opposition's defense because they do have a lot of great attacking options next up the game against Wickham and again it's about that positivity of wanting to play the ball forward and that directness you've got quality up top and you want to play those passes into those areas quickly that's what they do against a Wickham side that has a very very strong defense in my opinion get the cross in and get the ball to Ross Stewart something to remember look of course you've got other players coming in in terms of strikers but Ross Stewart has been fantastic for Sunderland this season and also we've got a lot of great players in and around the box so don't mess about move the ball up the pitch quickly and give them those opportunities to put those crosses in let's let it run again it comes here and when it drops you can even see the point there get it forward get it wide get it to those players so that we can get Ross Stewart in the box and we can get crosses into him Great play from them, quick, direct, it's got tempo as well, great cross, let's be honest, and a fantastic header. As the season progresses, I think the time for being complex is maybe done because that tension that comes as the games go on make it very difficult. And that's what I mean when it comes to Sunderland. Yes, you've got the option in terms of having lots of formations with this squad, especially with the new arrivals. But that sort of need instead of us sort of want to pass the ball forward is what worked really, really well at the start of the season. It was free-flowing to a point, but it was direct. It had tempo to it. And yes, at times you could have set some dangerous passes within that. But when you got it, the look to play forward was always there. The look to drive with the ball was always there. This is the winner against Wickham. And Ross Stewart there, you had a player on the right-hand side available as well. And then it's a great finish for the team. Playing with that gusto and that simplicity... I think with the quality that this Sunderland side has, I think that's the way to go. Let's talk new arrivals then, because January, Sunderland were very busy. The chairman, Kirill Louis-Dreyfus, has gone for it in the window. Clearly, there's a feeling and a sense that promotion is right there, a real possibility. Again, another reason to maybe reframe this concern that, oh, it's not going to go our way again, and go, no, we've got a really good squad here, and with the right additions, we can get over the line. In terms of those new arrivals, you have Trey Hume, the right back from Linfield, 19 years old. Be interesting to see how much he plays between now and the end of the season. He was averaging 2.67 successful crosses per game, also averaging two successful dribbles per game with a success rate of 61%, which is all really exciting, I think. But look, possibly a bit raw when it comes to that quality. He's going to need a bit of time, but is an exciting prospect and a good signing. It's good to see that there's an array of signings happening here when it comes to Sunderland and not just going out for those big names, although those big names, of course, are there. Very attacking fullback slash winger. Wingback, sorry. So it's going to be interesting to see what part he plays. In terms of big parts to play, there's a few signings here that really could offer that little bit of stardust and experience to get Sunderland over the line. Danny Batt, the centre-back, 31, coming in from Stoke City. Such an experienced EFL defender and a great foil for someone like Callum Doyle. 260 appearances in the Championship, having turned out for the likes of Wolves, Stoke City, Sheffield Wednesday, amongst many others. Had a really strong debut against Portsmouth. The less said, the better about a lot of performances in that game against Bolton. But overall, that leadership that he can provide in the dressing room and on the pitch could be essential as we head into March and April. What feels very clear is that Sunderland will continue to look to get down the wings and put those crosses in for Ross Stewart and possibly Jermaine Defoe as well, because we'll talk about him in just a second. But the signings of Patrick Roberts and Jack Clark, I think are two that you could be really, really excited about when it comes to being a team in League One, looking to try and get promotion. These are players that are certainly championship quality. Both right wingers, but both can play on both sides as well. You've got a 24-year-old and 21-year-old old as well which I think is just fantastic in terms of the recruitment in terms of the age of these players Patrick Roberts has he's moved about so much during his career and he's never kind of had a full season really
really anywhere. So for him to now make roots, I think we see that a lot of the time with these players that are at big clubs, have loads of loan moves, never really kind of belong anywhere. And it, it hurts their development. I think Patrick Roberts being at Sunderland could really offer up that little bit of stardust and quality. And down the road, you've got a player that can develop, certainly, and will want to start to make a real name for himself at one club and one club alone. Jack Clark, similar kind of thing, you know, in terms of all those loan signings. He showed promise in Premier League 2 this season, scored three, assisted four in 15 appearances. But he's one of those where I, I saw him at QPR. At QPR, when he was on loan, he never really felt like there was a spot that was his. So he will come into this squad and you would hope that he will get that opportunity to try and get the game time that he truly needs as a 21-year-old. But Leeds United fans will let you know, of course, that he was a good player and they really didn't want to lose him to Spurs when they did. So two great signings when we're talking about a team in League One. And then, of course, we've got to talk about Jermaine Defoe. Ross Stewart has scored nearly 30% of Sunderland's goals this season. That's great, but it's also a lot of pressure and you need a few more cameos from some of the other players scoring goals. And someone like Jermaine Defoe, who will possibly be happy to play as a substitute and come on or in certain games where you can play two up top. That's another route for Sunderland to play as well. There's no doubt he can score goals full stop, but there's no doubt he can continue to score goals in League One. And again, in terms of that experience, that understanding of the pressure maybe that's at Sunderland right now, there's probably some parallels between Glasgow Rangers and the pressure to win that title and Sunderland and the pressure for them as a huge club in League One to go up. So someone who can keep calm and carry on like Jermaine Defoe and score goals when you need someone to take their chances. This is a fantastic signing. The fans, of course, love him as well. I see no problems with this as well. A fantastic professional. He keeps himself a great nick as well. And it could be the difference. You know, think of Kevin Phillips in the past sometimes you just need that little bit of quality maybe not the legs so much and I think the quality is around him as well so Jermaine Defoe I think is a fantastic signing so why should Sunderland fans remain faithful well I think as I said there's flexibility in this squad mostly they've played 4-2-3-1 63% of the time so far this season but with those additions that have been brought in I think there's options there to play three at the back if you want to play three at the back, play two up top if you want to play two up top as well. When it comes to possession, they've been able to play direct or have the ball as well. You've got great players, of course, the likes of Pritchard in there, the likes of Ada McGeady as well, Lyndon Gooch, good player, Embleton, great players on the ball as well. So if you're playing the likes of Doncaster, for example, that where they had 61% possession, won that game 3-0, they're happy to do that. But also if they want to play a team or they're going to play a team like Plymouth Argyle, who like to have the ball themselves, they can be compact and, and careful and only have 44% possession in that game as well and in that game they won that game of course 2-1 victory thanks to goals from Nathan Broadhead and Dan Neal and another reason for Sunderland fans to be excited is Dan Neal and his debut season. The 20-year-old has done absolutely brilliant. He's born down the road at South Shields and he's enjoying a great debut season. If you think of the two goals and the seven assists that he's put forward as well, he's a great player when it comes to being part of that double pivot, a player that we probably didn't expect to have the season that he's had so far this year. Able to play in a 4-2-3-1, happy to play in a 3-4-2-1. And some of these clips that I'm going to show you now show why he's going to be a really important part for the team. Because we've spoken about experience, but also I think sometimes you need those local lads to help you and help galvanise the fans as well as Everyone is always going to be that little bit tense when you've gone through what Sunderland have gone through. This is a great goal in terms of the ingenuity of the team, his ability to uh, execute instructions for the team from the training pitch quite effectively. The next clip, this clip, it gets me excited about this youngster. I think, you know, ability to take on the ball here, but also to drive a little nutmeg, pretty tasty as well there as well. And is there end product? Can you get your head up? Yes, you can do that in a confined space in the middle of the pitch as well. And the goal comes from that. And also what I like is that ability to be a box to box midfielder. I think he demonstrates that in this next clip here that he understands pass and move. And I think the team as well can do that. You can see Pritchard here just doing a little bounce back once again, offering it and then a great little run from Dan Neal. Understanding the space available, a great cross shows that he can play as a more attacking eight as well, possibly in a three-man midfield, which gives you another option as a 4-3-3. Who knows? So what I wanted to say in this video was Sunderland fans hang in there, basically. You know, of course, there's always that feeling when it's not gone your way in the past that it's so easy to be cynical. But I know 
that right at the root of so many Sunderland fans, there is that optimism that wants to be unleashed. They just need a reason to do it and they just need to break through that glass ceiling of League One and get themselves back into the championship because, you know, the ownership is exciting. The fan base is so exciting. You're still at a huge ground as well. And there's some exciting players coming through the ranks as well. But you're going to have to keep calm. You're going to have to show that bit of grit and steel under pressure because it could be the playoffs for Sunderland. But there's no reason why they can't be the likes of Wickham, the likes of MK Dons, the likes of Wigan as well. They're good enough. They're in a healthy place in the table right now. And <laughs> it's going to be exciting. Will it work out for Sunderland? Who knows? But I think it's one where the positivity of the fans and that experience that's been brought in could just get Sunderland over the line. But what do you guys think? Let me know. Of course, this isn't just a video for Sunderland fans. If you're an EFL fan, a League One fan, of course, this is such a tricky division this year, League One. So it's never going to be plain sailing for any team in this division. Do you see Sunderland going up this season? What have you thought of them when you've played them this season? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the League of 72. Hit the like button as well. And we'll see you in the next one.